What's up, people? It's the Business of Everyday podcast with Ajo Abinola. Keep listening. Keep listening. Hi. Season's greetings to you all. How was your Christmas? I hope you're enjoying the holidays. So just letting you know that this is the last episode on our Money Matters series for this year. That said, I specifically curated this content for such a time as this, having your growth in mind. I mean, apart from listening while recording and also editing, I've actually listened several times more just to glean lessons as I make plans for the next year. I sincerely hope you do same. On this episode, my guest and I engage on strategies to step you up financially in 2023. You'll learn how to make good use of the time you have now, learn good money habits, and also how to identify and prepare yourself for opportunities you seek in the coming year. And even beyond, the wisdom he shares with us is timeless, and I'm excited to share with you. Now let's get into it. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here today with the ever resourceful Elder Ebenezer Ichampo, also known as Nana Akada. He is the former head of procurement for Ministry of Agriculture. He's a businessman, but of all the things that he's into, I think he prefers to be called a farmer. So today we are sticking to him being a farmer. We are here going to talk about how to thrive in difficult economic times. So we want to draw from his wealth of experience and also wisdom to help us to not just survive these periods but also to thrive and make good use of the time that we have now so um let me welcome nana akada to the business of everyday podcast to this series that we are having which is titled money matters welcome sir i'm glad and very much honored to have you here priscilla thank you for having me All right, please. How are you doing? How is everything? Oh, three things: the grace of God, okay. the mercy of God, and then experience. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so uh, we want to just hit it straight. What would you say before we dive into the questions that we have for you in terms of you know the season that we are in right now, globally and also in Ghana and across Africa? All right, thanks. The truth is that there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. Whatever we experience has come before. We've had recessions. We have had economic meltdown every now and then. So it's, it's part of our system, ecosystem. It's part of it. So maybe somebody is experiencing it for the first time, or others are becoming more conscious of it happening. Uh, but what I want to mention is that it has happened before. And the question is, if you are not aware of this, next time it, you you might be speaking on it again. If you were not able to prepare yourself to mm. be able to have a better plans ahead of you, right. it's, when we overcome it, it will still come again. Mm. Mm. Whatever we are seeing is it's a cycle. Okay. So it, yeah, sure, that's it. Can you just briefly tell us what an economic, you know, recession or crisis is all about, and the impact it has on, you know, everyone? Maybe we are hearing a lot of people were saying that okay, it's because of COVID, and then they jumped to um, Russia, Ukraine, and you know, even in Ghana, just um, a week ago, you know, the dollar CD rate was, you know, <laughs> was something else, but in just this week. We are seeing the CD rise a little, and you know it, things are just unpredictable in in these times. So, um, what can you tell us about these economic situations that we are having to face now and then? Okay, you see, I'm not an economist, but okay. I want to use a layman explanation to help us to understand. Mm. We are in a situation where people are receiving the same income, however. When they go to the market, prices of goods have gone up. So mm. the same amount mm. of money you were having because of inflation it has lost its value. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, things that you you could have bought maybe some months ago, 
you will be buying lesser quantity the same amount of money and that is what we are experiencing globally mm -hmm. let me mention mm -hmm. that we are living in a global village right whatever right. happens one country does happen to the other nobody mm -hmm. is an island so the issue of uh, ukraine the issue of the covid has had impact on us whether you believe it or not it has especially if you, if you look at the logistics uh, chain when you want to import something previously in my workplace when i was procuring stuff if things are coming from outside especially if you are, it's coming from china you can see that the supplier should deliver within 90 days mm. today you can't give anybody 90 days to supply you can't wow you can't you have to give the person about 180 days because there are a lot of uncertainties mm. There are a lot of uncertainty, so uh, it's important we, we make it clear on that. And because of that time lack, it has affected the importation of goods because mm -hmm. previously, I remember last two years, the cost of a container was around 2000 Let's say 20 feet container was about $2,000, $2,500. Now, hoovers are around $10,000. Wow. So wow. you see the quantum jump. Yeah. which will yeah. then affect uh, the cost of uh, goods that we have imported in the country. So in a nutshell, I want to say that globally, the supply chain has been disrupted. And if it happens, that as we even speak now, you know, China has not just still pinned up his market for food production. They are still wow. battling with COVID here and there. They are uh, locking down cities. A whole city can be locked down. People will not be allowed to work for days and weeks. So China is struggling, trying to deal with the COVID situation. Uh, so that's what has affected uh, whatever we see around us. But it's also an opportunity, Priscilla. Yes. Where yes. there's any uh, challenges and opportunity, now we need to begin to look at homegrown solutions, looking yes. for opportunity to have alternate uh, import substitution product. Mm -hmm. Things that, that you would have imported, we need to think, oh, what can we do? Now we expect the scientists, the researchers, and the lecturers begin to think outside the box and look at things that we can actually manufacture locally so that we don't depend on importation. If you depend on importation now, you, you will not be in control of your economy. That's right. That's right. You know, in the beginning, you mentioned something that, you know, all these things that we are experiencing now, they are not new. Like, there's nothing new under the sun. And so even if we get through it in, in the near future, we are going to experience something like that again. And so yeah. looking at how things are, what do you think or what are some practical things that, you know, we can begin to do, even if we've not started, we can begin to do that will help us to stay on top of whatever situations that will come, whether people are fighting or not, you know, we will be able to survive. We will not be hit by all those things, even though globally things are not well, but we'll be able to stay afloat. Wonderful question. You know, the first thing that I will encourage is that if you take personal responsibility of their life, mm. personal responsibility is critical, you know, if somebody will beat you for you to cry, it's better you beat yourself. So if you take personal responsibility, it means that it doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter who gave birth to you, the environment in which you find yourself, the country in which you belong. You have to now say that I exist. And now from today, I want to plan for my life. Mm. Five years, 10 years, 20 years to come. It says the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. So today right. is very right. critical. Uh, what happened yesterday, you, you can't change it. Uh, no, no matter how you cry about it, you can't change it. It has happened. Mm -hmm. You can only influence what will happen tomorrow based on what you do today. So today That's is right. critical. Today is very critical. So today my advice is that they should be able to take personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Maybe as teens and uh, youth here and there, uh, you've been depending on your parents and you think that you will never grow. I tell you, like I mentioned, this thing will keep on uh, repeating itself. So now that we are communicating with you, we want to advise that begin to take responsibility and plan your life. The second one is a, as an attempt to 
take personal responsibility. They should have what we call self education. Okay. When you go to school, they don't have any subject on money. Hmm. Maybe Priscilla, you had opportunity to have a lecture, a course on money. No. <laughs> yeah, nobody <Never. laughs> teaches you what money is, how to get money. We've been there has been an assumption that when once you go to school, you can control money, but that's not true. Hmm. And that is why those who didn't go to school are those who have money in our country. True. Right. Me. That's true. Very true. Yeah. Because you, you, you went to school to learn a, a Pythagoras theory, <laughs> you learned botanical names, you learned all these stuff. But they will not tell you things that will make your life enhance. Yeah. And the first thing is that I want to encourage the youth to learn like self-education. You have mm. the YouTube, you have the Facebook, whatever. Go there, search for talks or books on money and begin to read. Uh, you see, wealth is created over time. Mm. It's not an inst- instantaneous. That's why most of these youth are trying to stake my bet here and there. You will never get money. Money is not true lottery. Mm. If you stake my bet, you will always be poor. <laughs> That's not where the money is. That's true. Money responds to products, goods and services. Mm. Money is a byproduct. Since a byproduct... It's a byproduct of goods and service. Now we are using Zoom. Somebody created that solution. We use it during COVID, isn't it? Right. Have you ever thought of when, when, during COVID if we were not to have uh, Zoom? Many churches would have collapsed. Mm. Many organizations would have collapsed. Many yes. businesses would have collapsed. But somebody came out with Zoom. And everybody decided to use Zoom. And the person got money because people were prepared to take the service from uh, Zoom, the one who created Zoom. That's so right. my point is that young men and young women listening to me in the next five years, what product do you want to bring to the market? What problem have you identified so that you bring solution that will be meaningful and beneficial to society? And when society is taking advantage of it, they will reward you by giving you money. Mm. So it is important that the next phase of recession that will be coming, look for a product. Mm. What product do you intend bringing? And let me mention that now, 40 years ago, uh, in Ghana here, that's 82, 83, if you are aware of it, yeah, we had a very serious farming. Yeah. Good. You people were young. <laughs> I time, wasn't farming, born. <laughs> I, you were not born. Most of you listening to me were not born. So you don't know that experience. 40 years ago, we had a very serious start, this issue. What happened was that most of the farms got burnt. Mm. So our parents migrated from the village and came to the city. Now, 40 years, there has been a back turn. Mm. The back turn is that now the city is hot. And those of you crying, complaining about the economy, it's only the city people crying for. Those in the village, they don't know anything about don't inflation. They don't care. <laughs> Their lives, they are self-sufficient. Oh, yeah. So now people have to go back to the village. And that's what is going to happen. And mm. it's going to be urban, rural migration. Previously, it was rural, rural urban urban, migration. Yeah. Now, it has changed. So, young men, listen to me. The money has gone back to the uh, the farm. That's where the money has gone. It has moved from the city. Mm. So, you need to plan to go back to the village and then see what solution you can bring to solve problems in the village and the money will come and meet you over there. Right. So as you were speaking, you know, you mentioned um, we should identify something that we we can do, like money is attached sure. to, uh, you know, solving a problem. But sure. um, can you help us? How do we search for these? You know, sometimes we are all around certain <laughs> things, but our eyes are not <laughs> open to see some of these things. How yeah. do we really look at things twice and identify that this is something, you know, it's not just about, okay, this is a problem. So maybe in my house, I have an issue with a chair. And if the chair is not going to be in demand for people to buy, it will be a waste of, you know, resources, going to get money, put into something like that to say, I'm going to sell. So how do we really identify profitable things so that we will not waste so much time doing a whole lot of things? Meanwhile, there's something that if we had identified, would be able to start working and then making use of that opportunity. That is great. So number one, to identify opportunities, first of all, you have to do what I call self-assessment. There are things in your life that you don't struggle to do. Mm. 
So first assignment I'm giving to those listening to me, you go home, sit down, take a paper, mm. list things you can do without struggling. Okay. Anything. You can eat, you can sing, <laughs> you can draw, whatever. You can sew, you can read, you can plan. List all the things. It could be hundred things you can do without struggling. Not the things you went to school to do, things you can do. Some people have gone to school and <laughs> instead of going to acquire knowledge in things that they can do so easily, they've gone to study things that they are struggling to understand. Understand. <laughs> uh, because somebody has told them that, oh, medicine, yeah, if you become a doctor, you know, you cry when you see blood, you are running away. Running. But because, uh, look a few, that kind of be yeah. somebody is pushing you to study certain course that you think you don't have that strength. You are good in reading, but you are studying hard maths. And that's why you are getting F and the like. Okay. So, list things. Oh, no, they will not understand hard maths. Elective maths. Elective maths. <laughs> okay, in our, in, our, in our period was hard maths. Maths that has been added. So now, <laughs> tells you that it's going to be difficult work. So, like elective maths. So, I want to, where, no matter how old you are, sit back. Things you can do. Some of you can... Uh, do a lot of art things. You can use clay to do so many things. You can sing so excellently. You are good in MC. You are good in uh, even social media. You are good responding, writing. These are things that you have to list that you can do. After you've done that, the next point is that the things you have listed, ask yourself, each of them, what will be the number of people that these things can benefit them? The impact you can sing. Okay, maybe your voice is so good you can sing. It means that hey, I can sing, and oh, a lot of people like people who sing. They like songs, isn't it? So you can. Oh, then yeah. my singing, I can bless the whole world. So list things, the impact of your giftings or your talent or things you can do so easily. List the impact. Okay. I can eat so well. So eating competition, or you can become a taster because you'll eat. If somebody, uh, any restaurant wants people who can taste, it's somebody's job, mm -hmm. then he goes around tasting food <laughs> and giving recommendation to uh, restaurants here and there <laughs> for them to be paid. Wow. All these are very, and to check where your the things you can do, what level of impact those things can affect the people in the society. Take your time and look at it critically. And the third thing you also do is that after you've known the impact, now you want to look at the resources you need to achieve those things. Some of them, you don't need anything. You don't need any resource from anywhere. The only resource you need is time. Maybe you know how to sing. You have to have time to rehearse, voice training, on your go to the beach, Practice, take time. So those are the resources you need, time. So you list, okay, some, some of them you need a bit of money. And you realize that if you are not able to raise the money, your parents can even support. Or friends can contribute. Or uh, the society in which you find yourself. But you see, listen carefully. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. A step. Don't, don't, it doesn't begin without a jump, a step. That step is where you look at what you have and do it gradually. You, your voice like cockroach in your house and you want to go and, and sing for, <laughs> for within the church. No, nobody will give you that opportunity. But when you sing among your family and they know, Akushia knows how to sing, they give you the encouragement here and then, then that will boost you, pave way for you to move to the next stage. So my point is that look at the resources that you need for each of the things you have mentioned. Then the last thing you have to look at is that you rank them. Which one must I do first based on your strength? Don't use somebody's strength to jump. Mm. It's not possible. Don't say my uncle says you will take, I remember when we were growing up, those, those who depended on their uncles and their mothers who were in our <laughs> abroad. So my mother will come and carry me, take me. Some of them are still in Ghana. <laughs> Because of that, they didn't learn because they thought that they were going. Most of them are still here. Mm. You, you get a point. So don't yeah. use somebody's strength to jump. 
because right. he's, he's, man can promise you sometimes beyond their capacity. <laughs> they have the the willingness, but they might not have the means. It's one thing having the desire and having the means. So mm. don't use somebody's strength to jump. Use your own strength. Right. So when you do the ranking, look at the things that you don't need external support. Mm. Things that you can do your own and start with those. Many people have not started because they are waiting on somebody who promised. And that, I can tell you, no matter the prayers you pray, sometimes it will not come. Mm. God is expecting you to start from Jerusalem where, with yourself. What do you have? The resources available to you, start. And with that, people will see the giftings and the talents in you and want to invest in you. That's right. So when you're able to do that, I tell you that you'll be able to know the kind of solution you have to bring in society. Because you see, like you rightly mentioned, you don't just stand and up and then want to bring a solution. For example, if you, you know how to develop an airplane and you come and set up manufacturing of airplane in Ghana, you won't get any market. <laughs> because our resources are people don't have the money to buy <laughs> airplane yet. Yeah. You get a point? Yes. So when we, as part of the ranking, you also look at, hey, this I can do, but uh, what do we have people ready to commit money to exchange the products you want to bring? Mm. Those are the things you also look, do. Normally in the academia, they say we do market research. Right. But right. maybe you are not there yet. You listen to radios and listen to people's complaints. That's why you see, hey, this people are saying this, this, so then you know that, hey, as I'm speaking to you, I don't know whether you're listening to the news, you know, uh, food security has become a huge topic. Yes. Yeah. Environmental, then, 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 has become a huge topic. Then it means that if you have any solution around food, any solution around environmental, then people will be, uh, people, policymakers and people will be willing to consider that solution that you are bringing. Mm. Yeah. So you always have to open your eyes and ears, listen to the news whilst you are listening to the news. That's true. That is where you see the where the problems are. And then you go and dream to bring solution to those problems. Mm, that's amazing. I mean, you just said something that is every time in the morning, if you go by public transport, that's where you are going to hear <laughs> <laughs> all the Problems things that are not out. going yes all the yeah, things that yeah. are not going well in this country and beyond and That's so it. if i mean you've really opened our eyes to something right here like instead of joining in the complaint we should rather use that as a means to get something that we can uh, provide a solution out of you know to solve all those things that you are talking about and in that lies the money that we are you know <laughs> we are looking for so mm. that's, yeah, that's really, really a good one. So Nana, what I want to ask now is that, you know, we are about entering into 2023 and looking at all the things that are happening around us, you know, what opportunities do you think that in, in moving into a new year would be available for us to leverage on? Thank you, Bristol. Uh You know, sometimes when the year is coming to an end, with this new year resolutions and hopes here and there. Mm. And sometimes you people then cross over, jump over, somersault fly over, over. <laughs> fly over, all the over. I tell you, these are, you know, God is outside time. Right. Mm. And it is important that in entering this year, we need to begin to measure time based on minutes, seconds, and hours, not a maximum days, but not in years. Mm. If you measure time in years, you might think that you have more time. You don't. But if you begin to measure times in seconds, in minutes, in hours, and in days, you then become more effective. You'll be able to convert time. Mm. The reason why I'm emphasizing on time is that, you know, the, the group I'm speaking to seems to think that they have time. But they don't. Right. They don't. And time is the only product God has given to us for free. All of us have 24 hours a day. The question is in 2023, will you commit that every day you will be able to become a productive person? The time that you spend to actually produce a product, you convert the time, what to waste time? 
not to spend time, but invest the time. Mm -hmm. So my advice is that nothing will change next year if <laughs> you use the same method you used this year. Right. So if you want to get a good result next year, it means we need to begin to do things differently. Mm. And the first thing I want us to look for is that the resource that you receive, the moment you get it, see how you can save some. Be so committed, even if you are paid in cities, make sure those most of you have not married, make sure you save 50%. No matter how much you are paid, the principle is that save 50%. Mm. Don't tell me you don't have money. Don't tell me what you have is not enough. It should become part of you. Because you see, if it is not enough for you, it means that you are living beyond your means. Most people have become, I use the term, what we call conveyor bed. The moment they get money, the money is spent. Hmm. And <laughs> we, are saying, we are saying it's a may for This one is not may for The devil has no work in this. It's because we have not been taught that money is not meant to be spent. Money is meant to be saved and to be invested. Mm. So if you don't have that principle in mind, the moment you get money, you are going to buy something. Some of you are buying credit, data, and it's not generating any income. Your phone you're using has become a liability because you're mm. always spending on it. You're always buying credit. And the sad thing is that most of you, because you don't have money, you buy uh, like trotro, one city, two city, one a day. <laughs> by the time you say that by the end of the month, you spend more than the one who decided to buy. Let's see, let me buy 20 cities. Yeah. The one who is buying one city, two city, one city, three city, two city a day, who calculated by the end of the month, he would have spent getting to 100 cities on data. But because we are not so conscious of how we are spending everything, we are not spending anything. So my advice next year is that we should be committed to think of how we can make saving as our culture, no matter how much you are paid. Because see, Prisla, let me give you a typical example. Are you listening to me? Yes, please. Assuming this year, you've been complaining, they pay you a month hundred cities, and you are complaining because it's not enough. It's quanta, and even you are even borrowing every month. So you are, but there, there, there's nothing that is coming back to you, but you are leaving the hundred cities you are overspending. What shows that next year, your life will be a hand. Mm. But for example, if during this year, and you were paid hundred cities, and you decided that, okay, Every month I will save 50 cents, no matter what, to cut certain things. By the end of the year, how much would you have had? You would have had, let's say, 600 cities, true or false? That's true, 600, Good. yeah. Compared to somebody who spent all the money, who has a good launching part for next year, you are 600 Ghana city richer than the same person you started the year before. Hmm. True or false, you are 600 richer than the one you were, you were paid the same amount. True or false? That's true. That's true. Good. So now, coming back to your question, the opportunities will come. God is a God of opportunities. But sometimes the opportunity will come and you need 600 Ghana cities to mm. take advantage of the opportunity. We are and then unprepared. You are, you are at mm. grand zero. You have nothing. Yeah. And then it will play out to me, be like, God has no opinion. the door. He has. But you have closed the door because you did not plan for it. Preparation is key in life. In fact, when your preparation meets an opportunity, there is always a performance. And that's what we call luck. There's nothing yeah. like I was lucky. <laughs> You've been prepared for that. Yes. And when God realizes that you are prepared for, he opens the door. And you, you see, because your preparation will always make you see opportunities. Mm. But if you're not prepared... Some people, even, even when they have married, they are not prepared to give birth. And then you hear them, oh, Edda, may hear who? And you want support, ask the person, ah, we need the man you mean, what are you looking for? Because it's, the, the nine months is nothing to the person for him to prepare. They don't prepare for anything. He mm. won't always want to live on as a handout or whatever. So coming back to the, you listening to me, if 2023 will be a better year for you, it all started 2022 January. How you've been disciplining yourself to acquire knowledge, acquire skill, acquire some resources. So that when you enter 2023, you are just opening your eyes to see opportunities 
that will require a certain amount of money you have saved for you to invest in. Mm. Else, you play out the 2023, no matter the anointing or you, they will pour on you. I'm telling you, don't let anybody <laughs> lie to you. If you lack the analogy, the anointing or you will make you frustrated. You won't achieve anything. Mm. But mm. if you have the knowledge and with the resource as well, Presla, then you see that your life will be enhanced. This year, for example, you've used, uh, you, they paid you 100 cities and you have saved 600. With that 600 Ghana city, there are businesses that can be huge capital for you to then begin to multiply that 600 Ghana city, mm. which you can use as a launching pad for 2023. But if you have nothing, you will not see a new opportunity coming in 2023. And that will be the same thing the rest of your life. But we want to change the narrative by letting you become aware so that you take advantage of opportunities that God will open for you. Mm, amazing. That's wonderful. Gradually, we are getting to um, the end of this session. But then I want to ask you, can you share some tips with us as to how to really handle what we have, even money. Earlier, you mentioned that none of us went to school and then there was a single course that were taught you know, about how to really handle money and all that. Maybe the kind of lifestyle that we live is not also helping us to even save money or not to talk of even investing it. So moving forward, what are some tips that you are going to give us that would help us? to sustain what we have in a bit of even, you know, trying to invest and increase it? Number one, this principle called delay gratification. Mm. Delay gratification. It's one of the greatest virtues you can have, not instant gratification. Okay. So have that attitude of delaying how you want to celebrate how I want to spend. That is what we call delay gratification. Most of you want instant gratification. I want it because you see, you are living in the KFC, uh, mm, McDonald's fast mentality. <laughs> fast, fast, fast. Things. Fast food, yeah. Money, we don't gain worth with that mentality. You have to discipline yourself. The moment you get money, you know, money speaks. Money will tell you things that you, when you were a kid, that you dreamt of. That when you get money, you buy. The moment you get money, money will remind you those things. I'm telling you. And then you want to also let people know that you have arrived. So money will let you buy things that you really don't need. Mm. So let my advice is don't buy things that you don't need to impress people who do not care. Mm. When you do that, there's no way you can create wealth. Another thing is that the moment you receive money, like I've mentioned, the law says save so you have assuming you receive 100 percent of your money if you're a child of god which is a good principle you pay tight of 10 percent right remaining 90 percent 90 percent Presla. if you have not married commit that you pay yourself 50 percent that's what i'm talking about save pay yourself 50 percent you you have 40 percent the 40 percent you take five percent as a money for your offering and other support people who come to you that they need help, that 5%. So you have 35%. This 35%, that's what you use to pay bills, what food and all those things. So here, listen carefully. If the income you are receiving, you cannot live on 35%. Two things that you can do. Number one, either you cut your expenditure or two, you look for part-time, you have to work harder to get mm. more additional income. These are the two things you can do. If a young man, you have not married and you're not able to live on 35% every month of the income you are receiving, there are two things you can do. Cut your expenditure or look for additional work that will bring more income. But right. your principle right. is that 50% if you paid yourself, it's not your money, put it somewhere. Then the next thing is that you know, when you save, savings will not make you rich. <laughs> Only investment. So the purpose of saving is for investment. Hmm. The purpose of saving is for investment. So look for investment opportunities around. Don't be afraid, but gather more information. Don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> but take calculated risks. And no matter how careful you become, 
somebody will cheat you. It's part of the process. Don't be reckless. However, no matter how careful you be, <laughs> uh, somebody will cheat you small. That one. So don't don't be afraid. If somebody has cheated you before, that's good news. Learn something from it. Another thing I want you to avoid is somebody promising you to return on investment that is too good to be true. Mm-hmm. Oh, to her, every month you get 30%. I tell you, I tell you, it's not it's not sustainable. It means your money is going. It's a red flag. So be careful, people giving you nice promises, telling you if you put this one here, you do this, and then you go to get this return. It's not about 95% a scam. So be careful on that. Okay. And another and live a life of contentment. Know the kind of life you want to live. In fact, the richest person is a man or a person who is content with whatever he or she is having. Right. Contentment is not the same as not thinking big. No, mm. it's not the same as not thinking big. Then you feel you find yourself, try to think big and be the best and take advantage as much as possible. However, your lifestyle must be lived in such a way that you don't increase your expenditure based on when you see that you are getting inflows. No, contentment life is the life where you get to a level where you tell us, even when I receive $100 million, it will not affect me how I'm living mm. drastically. There's a law called the Parkinson law where people try to increase their lifestyle based on their inflow. Don't let that one affect you. So if you're able to live a life of contentment, I think I have to add that try and master money. Don't let money rule over you. Money is just a byproduct to rule over money, master over money, and then you win. Have control over money. Hmm? Don't let money control you. Money is a bad master, but a very good servant. When money is controlling you, oh, he will mismanage you. He will make you do things that you really wouldn't want to. But let's control money. By controlling money, I mean you use money to do good things, change lives, bring hope to people, influence life for the positive. If you're able to do that, I think. 2023 is going to be a wonderful year for us. Amazing. Wow. We received so much by you sharing all these things with us. But finally, as uh, we wrap up, uh, would you have some, I don't know if you've, you've put all in what you said, but we still want some last words from you, even as we sign out. Okay. I have said certain things that I want to repeat. Number one, take personal responsibility. Even over any situation in which you find yourself. Don't depend on politics and family and people who have promised you. If they fulfill it, fine, but make sure the focus is on God. The Bible says that curse is a man who puts his trust in man. Mm. But blessed is a man who puts his trust in God. But God, God is constant. He's the same yesterday, today, and we human beings, we are very able. We can change at any point in time. That's right. So focus on God. The beauty is that if you focus on God, God will always get a man to help you. Mm. But if you focus on man, and if God is not in the equation, and your focus is on, on man, oh, my brother, my sister, you'll be disappointed. That man, it's not intentional. Other people are also chasing him. Yeah. No man has an inexhaustible resource. Even the billionaires are still working on. <laughs> One would have thought that that the billionaire they should be sitting there for us to come, but they are working. They are competing with us on the market. As a man, your trust must be in Christ on the solid rock. And the next thing is that when you read the Bible, Bible is not a religious book. It's a manual of life. So many people have gone through whatever you are going through. So stop experimenting with your life. Life is too short to experiment. Study the characters and learn from them. In fact, whatever you have seen anybody doing, if you go to that person and ask the person to show you how he did it, and you fool, you get the same result. That is why when you go to school, you learn medicine, you become a medical doctor. Why? Wow. Enter the processes to become a medical doctor. So when you go through and they take you through that process, you end up becoming a medical doctor. That's so right. learn from others. And then the last thing is I listen carefully. In 2023, your success and your progress. It's not how loud you shout amen 
and I receive it. But it's you having self-education, reading, getting the right material. As you read your Bible, get books, books that can help you to think the areas where you have interest. Commit time to those books. Read them. Read and build yourself. Build yourself. I'm going baby. Check for books. There are free books around. Read the poor biography, those who want to be like them. Read about them. Visit them. Those who get mentors to help you and guide you. And if you're able to do that, your results will be better than what you, you got 2022. Thank you very much. Awesome. Amazing. I nearly forgot this. I know you really love to read and there's one man who, you know, I know by now you've read every single book of his. That's Sandy Adelija. He's one man I also admire so much. Uh, so <laughs> as we take off, um, I'd want you to recommend like five books that is a must read for wow. every. In fact, what I will do for you, because you have your listeners. Okay. I will share those books with you. Okay. Who am I? That's one book. Okay. And then money won't make you rich. Mm. I will also share that book so that well, share with your people. Okay. Let them read money will make you rich. Who am I? That will help you to identify your purpose and your calling. Right. You I will share five books for you to share with your listeners. Okay. Okay. That will enhance their life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much, Anna, for taking time to share this, you know, wisdom and practical lessons with us. I'm so sure and I believe that we are going to really take note of all the things that you shared with us. And then me personally, <laughs> next year, things are not going to be the same as it was for me this year. Because, wow. I mean, yes, we are not going to do the same things we did this year whilst you're expecting, you know, unusual things next year <laughs> so yes yes so thank you so much and we are grateful and maybe sometime again we'll, we'll come and knock on your door again for you to bless i'm us always again. available for your personal so come for more <laughs> all right thank you so much and god bless yeah, you come. thank you so much for listening today if you enjoyed this episode share it with someone you know needs to hear it do consider subscribing to this podcast on whatever platform or podcast app you're listening from so you do not miss out on the good stuff happening right here. I will catch you next week. Until then, be great.